one of my favorite broadcasts because I had the opportunity to interview the mini me, little, well, adult, mother, wife, entrepreneur, businesswoman, uh, artist, choreographer, and I could just go on and on, but Davron Rosia Critton. She talked about her life and she talked about being a cheerleader and her prophetic words about that, being on a competition squad, her prophetic words about that, being anointed by Prophet Bob Jones and how powerful his uh, words were, the impact that he had on her life. But what I love the most is her humanity, how she laughed and talked about the fears she had to face, the fear of failure, how she conquered her fears and walked in faith and met some of the greatest challenges in her life. But she wore a good warfare with the prophecies that went before her and using great examples by her own life testimony of how God as the super to your natural, how he anoints you and helps you to do natural things to accomplish what he desired for you, even to help you fulfill your dreams. I hope that you get all of that and more out of this broadcast. So I was talking to Devon earlier, um, and I said, I want to talk to you about your song, God Can, God Will. It was a song that God gave you when you were, um, I believe that it was in the womb of Devon before she was old enough to start having a cycle or having children by the incidents that happened with her life, being thrown from the car, uh, all of the things that occurred because praise was just instrumental in making her who she is and then hearing a song and her being a prophet. Did you know it was a prophetic song? Uh, what made you um, make it your first single and did you have any idea that God was going to use that and he was going to send you into nightclubs like with uh, Candy State, now are you just hearing this prophetic word today and uh, uh, finding yes. out that, oh, just I hearing am? that right now. Yes, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> it is the word of the Lord. Why did you release your song and where? Um, the song was released on 10 15 15. Um, I debuted it at the Hill and the Whole Woman Conference down in Daytona. Orlando. In Orlando, I'm sorry. And um, I sang it, debuted it there, and it released on the 15th. But backing up, I guess, and then going back forward, I think it's very odd that the Lord would choose me. I love to help people, but I'd rather do it not in front of people, you know, kind of discreetly. And, and, and how is that different from your mom? Okay. Yeah. Well, she's, my mom's different. No. <laughs> I don't like talking in front of people. People make me nervous. I don't like everybody staring at me. So I thought God really has a sense of humor that he would call me to preach or to prophesy because I love helping people, but I, like, I don't like being in the limelight. I don't like it if you're coming in the service and they stop talking and say, would you? And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Just move on with that. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, I think it's because on the natural side, I love dance and arts, and I do love music. And I'm very good on the stage. That's what my training has made me really good, you know, to work a crowd. That's why I'm able to do that. But on the flip side, growing up as a pastor's daughter, it made me shy away. I don't like to be the target. It, it started to make it difficult for me to want to be out front. And, you know, I, I started needing to be in the back and just remove myself or I would try to be obedient okay God I'll do this when you say but otherwise I want to be invisible so I won't be someone's target 
you know, or their punching bag. Um, and so I think it's very odd <laughs> that, that I'm here, especially since my brother always got in prophecies, my oldest brother, about singing and writing songs around the world. And I just thought, wow, that's so amazing. You know, I would look at him like, cool, can you teach me that? You know, you're going to do that. But do you know what I thought about today that you probably forgot? Bob Jones gave you a prophecy when he decided that, it, well, not decided. He said the Lord spoke to him to anoint us both mm -hmm. and anoint us at the same time. And that's when you were doing Runner the dance, seven last, uh, seven types, types of, of worship, worship. in okay. the same sanctuary. He said the Lord said that he would come that Sunday and the one that runs and leaps in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea he was talking about you because you were a little girl and I was an adult and I was trying to figure out who was the other person. And he kept saying, no, that's not the person. That's not the person. That's not the person. At the same time, he gave you a prophetic word that you would be able to do so many things well, you would have to decide which one you'd like to do. I remember that. Included that. singing. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> but <laughs> I do remember that. I just still, I never can imagine which way God or what he's doing and how he's going to do it. It just every day I just try to be obedient. And okay, I'm going to trust you. But it's, it's very hard because I am consumed by fear in certain areas. <laughs> you know, everything in me is like, no. My body starts to say no. You know, even my mouth doesn't want to move. My insides are shaking when I'm trying to sing. And how is that different <laughs> from when you were chasing your dream at 16? And uh, I covered that on the last broadcast. You'll have to watch it to see what I said about you. Um, how you were just vomiting all the way from down 231. When I turned on 20, I'd have to pull over. And you were literally projectile vomit. I hate to say almost like the exorcist. You know, you're just throwing up. Sorry. You're never the exorcist, sweet. <laughs> okay. but just, just regurgitating because you were so nervous. You yeah. were chasing your dream. You wanted to cheer since you were two years old, mm -hmm. but you were terrified of the experience, the tryouts of over 100 girls. How is this incident different? You're just older, but do you did you have the same butterflies well, and I, nausea? I was thinking about this today. I, I, and I'm blaming my parents. <laughs> I don't uh, know who her parents are. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about this today. I was asking God, like, why is it so difficult? You know, one of my strongest gifts is faith. But one of my greatest battles is fear all the time. You know, I have to really, they really. diametrically oppose each other. Absolutely. Faith and fear are always fighting. Because fear wants to, fear is from the demonic side and mm -hmm. faith is from the angelic side. And boy, does it beat me up. It, it fights. We're always engaging in, in war, fear, and I, and faith. And we're, I'm, some, I'm, I like to think I'm on the faith side trying to battle the fear, you know, all the time and beat it up. But um, my parents both st told stories about them struggling, being in front of people and having stage fright really bad. My dad said he didn't, when he was called to preach, he would hide behind the pulpit, or was that you? No, it was your dad. Okay. I have my own story. <laughs> it was him. He would sit and hide on Tyndall Air Force Base and sit down in between the uh, couches and let people take over the meeting, and, <laughs> and I would have a fit later on, and <laughs> we'd go into other places. Yeah. He would tell me, say something first, but it made me uh, sharper and better at extemporaneous speaking. Because he would push me out front and say, say something. And so he really helped me to be able to speak off the cuff without thought. I don't think that was his motive. I think he just wanted to use me <laughs> to make him all right. <laughs> and, and my, yes, and my mother um, said that she, as a child, she was always very nervous. Oh, yeah. And um, they, back then, her grandmother gave her something called something, Nervine yeah, absolutely. to they calm her nerves. Alka-Sosa tablets that look like <laughs> Alka-Sosa. I was so nervous. My hands would shake, you know, I, my feet would shake. I was just extremely nervous child. And as an adult, when I started prophesying, I thought God's trying to give me a heart attack. That really, I would say to him, God, you're trying to give me a heart attack. I can't do this. And I would literally have, before I knew the symptoms of a panic attack, I was having full-blown panic attacks 
where I needed a paper bag to slow up my breathing. I would have to cut my hands, turn around, and say, okay, God, I'm going to faint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, that came to me today. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that came to me today like, oh, okay, it's generational spirits of fear or familiar spirits that, you know, are trying to attack me, so it's making it even harder on top of my normal That's exactly nerves. what it is, and the listeners need to be aware that if you have <laughs> children, godchildren, nieces, nephews, stepchildren, whatever demonic force challenge your generation, your they're going to go for four generations. So they're going to look for anybody that's gifted, anointed, talented, have ascension gift callers, gifts of the spirit operating in their life, any prophetic word, they're going to show up to sabotage them just like they sabotaged you. She just displayed her personality. She's going to be very dramatic. That's why I wrote right past it because I have one of those little mini me that's just very larger than life. She performs what she wants to and then she plays the shy card when she wants to. She's very open, but she's a born leader. She wants to be in charge. If she's not in charge, she's not happy. In fact, if you're not careful, she'll be in charge of the most of you. She will run it. And this is not a thought, but you watch as she get older. She's smart, so she'll play you against one another. She's very, very smart. Don't break her wheel. Just bend the wheel to make her aware of I know what you're doing. And you're not going to come go along with this. But it has to do with the calling of life. All leaders, and especially all young prophets and poets at a young age, that's immediately to that prophetic finger. They'll straighten everybody else but themselves. She will, she will straighten everybody else. If you watch on the playground, she's going to tell them everybody else and get everybody else straight, and you'll have to catch her with that. And she may still deny it, but you'll catch her with that. Does that make sense? You can invest in your spiritual gift and help support Let the Prophet Speak by taking advantage of these offers. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a CD of Dr. Rozier's teaching from Healing the Whole Woman 2015, Dare to Dream and Watch God Do It. For your gift of $25 or more, you will receive today's teaching and a God of My Dreams journal and mug. For your gift of $50 or more, you will receive Dr. Rozier's newest release, God of My Dreams, the Dream Journal, and the Dream Mug. For your gift of $150 or more, you will receive the Dream Bundle, which includes God of My Dreams, a Dream Journal, Dream Mug, the God of My Dreams CD series, symbols and types, biblical mathematics, and Dream Symbols. To make a donation, contact Healing the Whole Person Ministries at 850-769-5442. Contact us via email at healingtheholeperson at comcast.net. Or you can make your payment securely through PayPal. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. If you know your family history and you really want to safeguard those that you love, tell them the story and push them past what maybe someone else didn't push you. I still remember when she tried out for FAMU as a cheerleader at 16. I still remember me trying out at Northside High School. The first year we had cheerleaders, I tried out. And I was so afraid, the fear of failure, I was so afraid of not being chosen, I didn't go back the next day. So the rest of my life, I wonder, could I have been a cheerleader? When she became one, I thought, I wonder if I could have been a cheerleader had I just not given up. So I was elated that the same fear of failure didn't get the victory in the next generation of trying it. So I would tell the story and push them, ride past it, mm -hmm. because I don't want you to have regrets, wishing. You know, I had this opportunity, and even if I fail, it's better to be able to say I tried it and I failed. I um, was rooting on my brother all these years, and I would get prophecies as a young girl about prophetic words that you're going to sing and you're going to make CDs. And I would straight up tell them, you know, I was always a bold little girl, and I would say, no, that, you know, that's not right. 
you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and, or I would stare them down. Or you need look. to apologize to those yeah, people. Yeah, I sure really should. I'm sorry, wherever you are. I hope you're watching this. But I really felt, I, my, my, I guess, my soul ram, my humanity, my flesh adamantly opposed what they were saying. Like, I just knew you're really missing God. This is not How accurate. How about when Leon Timbo tried to get you to go into the studio with he and Gerard? few years ago, maybe about five years ago in Atlanta when Timbo was recording something and you would not. Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's been, you know, many offers, come and record and sing, and my answer has always been no. And Pastor Glenn Bostic, yes, who's this, deceased, mm -hmm. that asked you to record with him? Yeah, I just don't think I want to do that. That's, do you feel convicted? No. Okay. I, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I still don't feel bad. I mean, I just, I, I did the best I could. No, I just, did, I don't want to do it. And, and so that's the thing that's so odd, though, I, I guess, I mean, we really are beautifully made, wonderfully and beautifully made, because even though I was saying no, I always have an ear for God. If God says it, then I'll make myself do it, whether I'm throwing up, whether I can't. Somehow I'm going to, you know, pursue it, like she was saying about FAMU. It's like a strong spirit of faith came on me at certain moments, or um, I guess it's always an operation, but stronger... In certain moments of my life, it was stronger than other times, and I knew I was meant to try out for, I knew I was going to cheer um, in high school and for a university level, and I knew I was going to try out, but everything in me said I can't do it. I mean, my body was rejecting, I mean, betraying me. It was falling apart. I didn't even know how I was going to, you know, get up there and perform, but I kept seeing it in my head. And all night I would see myself there. And I would pray while I was on the court trying out. And it was thousands of girls there. And I was of um, two. They only chose two freshmen that year. And I got the second highest score at that, at that time. But I remember feeling something lift me up in my jumps. They were higher. And I remember my hands doing stuff that I couldn't. You know, I was like, "Whoa, yeah!" You know, and while I was cheering, I mean, that was a super on your natural. I could feel it, and I knew. I mean, just everything that they did, and I knew I, it was. A, I mean, I saw people's faces, and I was like, "I'm thrilled too." They at FAMU at that time they invite the public into the tryouts, which makes it even worse to watch and boo. And so I mean, you get an opportunity to perform in front of a crowd. Yes. Oh, goodness. So, I mean, for some reason, they were, like, cheering me on, and then I forgot to do something. They was like, come on back. You got to do that. I was like, okay. But, and I'm good. I'm, I like to say I'm a good actor, which I learned to do growing up as a, as a, a pastor's daughter. So, I mean, even though in the inside I'm like, <laughs> most of the time I feel like running and crying and falling apart on the outside. I'm like, okay. And so it's, when it's so real on the inside. But I, I said, okay, I'm going to go for it. Something kept driving me, and, and I made it. And I remember before then, at Gulf Coast, I, um, at that time, I injured my knee, and I was tumbling. And so I lost my ability to tumble, I guess, for fear of injuring my leg. I was pacifying it. And my coach at the time said, we're going to have a front row of cheerleaders that are going to tumble. And, um, and the back row, you know, they're going to they're gonna lift people. And I said, Coach, put me on the front row. I'm going to get it by tomorrow. She said, by tomorrow? I said, yes. And so I just felt like, okay, I'm going to get this. So I went home, and I was praying all night, like, Lord, listen, it's important to me. you got to be with me. I need to get this again. You have to help me. And all in practice, I kept falling, falling, falling on my head, and I just kept getting back up. And it was like, you want to stop? No, I'm going to do it. And I kept, that's the thing about me also. I don't like fear. But I'm fearful, but I hate it. It makes me mad that I'm afraid. So I just keep trying to go at Let me at it. I'm, I'm just trying to kill this. I'm just sick of you aggravating me. You're torturing me. Yeah. And so I just keep trying, even though I'm so afraid. So the, the next day, um, she put me on the front row. And I got there. Um, it was a game and a pep rally. And I just remember on the counts, one, two, three, four. There I go. I felt like something lifted me high in the air. I barely touched my hand, 
And then it was time to do it again, and I did it again. And it was time to do it again, and I just kept flipping and looking like, whoo, thank you, Lord. You know, I couldn't believe it. They were at, before the, the um, pet rally, someone was trying to spot me. My hands were barely touching the ground. I was almost doing a tuck, just like something kept lifting me. And so I was, I was so, like, mesmerized. I always remember events like that where I prayed, and I saw it in my head, and he helped me to do it. And the, day, the next day after then, which I guess tells you something about the anointing, when I came to practice, I guess it had lifted because I kept falling right on my head, <laughs> head just falling. I said, oh, well, thank you for that day, Lord. You know, <laughs> that was great. Thank you for the grace. And <laughs> Most people never realize that God will help you in natural feats and natural things that is important to him. They just assume that he has to just work in a church setting again. But that was something natural, but something God wanted you to accomplish and was showing you how that he can add the super on your natural. That's the anointing, to grease, to smear, to help you to do supernaturally what you can't do in the natural. You know you couldn't do it without him, and when the anointing lifts, then you're not able to do it again. <laughs> and for you to even feel that presence, almost like an angelic presence. <laughs> um, I injured my leg. I pulled my hamstring. This was a competition squad. A competition that you and Erica squad that I was chosen for in Panama City. It was all of the elite cheerleaders um, around the area. Well, not just Panama City, around Bay County area that came together. And um, we're, we went to compete. And, and this was your dream again. At age five, her entertainment instead of cartoons, I would put her in front of the television and she watched cheerleader competitions. Mm -hmm. And I remember her looking at the one at Six Flags and said, Mom, one day I'm going to cheer on that stage. I'm going there and I'll be on one of those competition squads. And it was the only year that they had that competition squad that Bay County went. Yeah, the, and I um, pulled my hamstring and I could not walk at all. My leg was stuck bent that's that's the way that it felt best i could not straighten it but i knew that it was my chance to go i mean everything in me said i'm going to this competition and i can't even walk it just made no natural sense <laughs> so i was on crutches and at night when i would roll over i would scream and cry in pain that's how bad it was but i went anyway i told my mom she kept trying to talk me out of it like, you can't do it. You're just going to be disappointed. And I was, yes, I can. And I am. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and so I, we drove, I drove her to <laughs> Atlanta. But I drove her on the word of the Lord. She I was, asked her to call. I said, Mom, my mom, oh, my God, my mom <laughs> has always been, <laughs> she's always been my mom, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, she's. if she says no about something, the only way to change her mind was through prayer. So, I mean, from a young child and children we would join hands and pray that we could do things i mean it was a nightly occurrence i mean lord please speak to my mom i help her <laughs> prayer life Woo! i mean really it we had to pray about everything we would say mom do you have to hear god about everything we can't i mean it's just a skating ring it's just a party you know and she would yep i have to hear god the answer is no and i mean she would be put her foot down and we would put our foot down too like come on lord now you got that we would talk all night we would fast the four of us we little we would hold hands i would cry i mean please please god i mean this is ridiculous and i mean so i she kept saying no you're not going and i said mom you always you know say if god says call the prophet see what he says call someone else i know you're a prophet but you please so she called bob jones and Bob, no, I just said, I, I'm a prophet. You heard from a prophet. So she prayed throughout that night, and the next morning, the phone rang. It was Bob Jones. And I said, hi, and I'm just chatting with him. He said, I'm calling. He called the Debbie. He said, I'm calling for Debbie. I thought, oh. I said, oh, okay. He said, the Lord told me to call for Debbie. So I said, okay, let me explain to you what's going on. I thought if I sway him <laughs> and sway the word of the Lord if I explain to him he'll understand when he said call for Debbie I thought oh has she sneak did she sneak last night and call Bob Jones and tell him to call me the next day and talk me into it and he said the Lord said 
uh, after I told him about her leg and I had taken her to an orthopedic specialist, Talkington said there's no way she can cheer. He looked at me like I was a parent that needed to be arrested, <laughs> you know, to even suggest that. So I told him all of that and he said, but the Lord said, ride on her faith. And he quoted the scripture. Cast not away your confidence. Hebrews 10. Yeah, that's always been my, my scripture that I fight with. Um, so because she said it, I drove to Atlanta. Your turn. Yeah. We went to Atlanta, and all the way I couldn't, you know, walk. I had a hard time. I mean, they rearranged the you formations. I was on crutches. They had to get a wheelchair to get me from point A to point B. The van had to drive, like, down the sidewalk to get me close enough because to get to the wheelchair, it was just awful. I remember standing at the edge of the stage on my crutches, and I put my head down, and I said, Lord, if you just be with me, just let me, just let me do this. Just please let me do it. And I dropped my crutches and walked out there and flipped and jumped and, I mean, did the whole routine. Stun it, lift girls over my head. I mean. And I was having massive panic attacks. Sitting in the audience like, dear God Almighty. I couldn't walk before then, but my leg just, I, it, it was, I was able to straighten it and I didn't feel anything. And I just started walking. Just Do you remember that incident? I do, and I remember Devon, and I remember her hobbling on those crutches, and I remember her doing everything that she did on stage, and when she walked off, back to the crutches, but back on to stage, the crutches. she was doing it. I could not straighten my legs as soon as I walked off again, and we won first place. I mean, back, back to the injury. Out of 50 squads, they won the competition. Are you walking in faith now? Have you conquered your fears? Have you come face to face with all of the things that have hindered you from your divine destiny? Uh, fear of failure. I hope that watching this uh, interview with Davron, that you will realize there are certain things in life that you could have achieved if you had not allowed a generational spirit of fear of failure to keep you from trying. It is better to try something and fail than not to try at all. And I hope that you will get a copy of her new release, God Can, God Will, because her life uh, exemplifies that of all the things that God can and God will do in your life if you allow him to do it. God is a God that works in the marketplace. He works in the home. He works on the basketball court. He works in your marriage. He's not just a God that operates inside the church and only when you're speaking in tongues and being holy, but that you'll see in your human weaknesses he helps you to become a dread champion. Join me next week on Let the Prophet Speak.